Join Captain, people are joining in now. Yeah. Hello, everyone. So we have some people joining in. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining in for today's webinar with, with GMAC. We have Amy here from GMAC. And Hi. So yeah, the, 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 the hot topic for today is the, the GMAT Focus Edition. Right, so today we're going to cover everything that you need to know. So Amy will be will be guiding you through all the aspects of the new GMAT Focus Edition. We are all super excited for the new GMAT. Uh, in, in the meantime, I mean, uh, the, the format is going to be like this. So first, Amy will give all breakdown of the GMAT Focus, everything that you guys need to know. So please take notes, ask questions in the chat. Uh, we are we have uh, uh, Ellie and Fanny that will be help, helping us in the moderation on the chat. Uh, so please ask your questions in the chat. Uh, then after Amy, uh, I will give some tips from the preparation side of the GMAT, right? In terms of the new focus edition, current GMAT, and so on. And then we will open for Q and A at the end, right? So keep uh, posting your questions, guys, and we will we will take those questions at the end. Uh, if we can answer them in the chat, we will do that. To kickstart, I mean, uh, I see people are still joining in. Would be great to see where everybody is joining from. So if you guys can please write the, the name of the city or the country that you're joining from, it would be fantastic. And so welcome, Amy, another another <laughs> webinar together. How yeah. are you doing? Yes, I'm very well. Thank you. Yeah, summer seems to have arrived in the UK. So oh, yes. enjoying the, the nice warm weather it makes a change. True, true. Yeah, it's it's also it's also getting getting oh, warm and nice in Milan. Yeah, it's getting warm, I'm sure. So we have people from ah, London, Frankfurt. Hi, Franny. Mm -hmm. Hi, Linda. Welcome. Thanks for joining in. Okay. Well, I think we'll get started because I've got about yes, half an hour, probably, of um of content I'd like to get through, and with it all being quite new, it's um. Yeah, there's probably quite a lot to take in. Um, but just to reassure everyone, we'll make the slides available um, and we'll be around for Q&A. And also over the coming months, we'll be running, um, as in from GMAC's perspective, we'll be running various uh, virtual drop-in sessions and um, another sort of informative session similar to this. So if you don't catch everything tonight, don't be worrying. There'll be plenty of time um, to do so, you know, before the exam actually becomes available. So yeah, hope you enjoy the session um, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll get started. So, well, I'll introduce myself uh, before. <laughs> so as Angel said, and as you can see from the screen, I'm Amy Rogers and I'm the Senior Marketing Manager at GMAC for the European region. Um, and yes, I'm here today to talk you through everything that you need to know um, about the new GMAT exam, which we are calling the focus edition. So it'll be the session then will be broken down into six parts, um, as you can see here. Um, and we'll I'll take you through each part. Um, and then yes, we'll 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 deal with questions all, all at the end. But if you think of something whilst I'm speaking, just pop it in the chat. Um, and Ellie, Ellie and Fanny are there for moderation. Um, and yeah, we'll we'll deal with those questions um, at the end. Um, so for those of you who may not be too familiar with the organization that actually owns and ministers the GMAT exam, um, we are called GMAC, which uh, is the Graduate Management Admission Council. Uh, we've been running for over 70 years um, and we're a global mission driven association of leading graduate business schools. And our vision is for a world where every talented person can benefit from the best education for them. And we strive to enable schools and talent, so yourselves, to discover and evaluate each other. And the the uh, logos there that you can see at the bottom are just the various um, sort of products and services we have available, um, you know, to yourselves and also to schools. Okay, so I will now dive in to what the focus exam is all about. And um, as I said, we well, yeah, since the GMAT exam was first launched, I think way back in 1954, so well, well before any of us were born. Um, it has been the gold standard and has continued to evolve to ensure it remains a highly relevant indicator uh, of candidate preparedness for 
business degree programs. And over the years, we've worked collaboratively with business schools to ensure that the exam does remain the best assessment for business education. Um, and this, this GMAT focus then is the latest evolution in that journey. Um, over the last couple of years, then, we have undertaken a robust research program through a third party to objectively understand the needs of schools and candidates to help us evolve the candidate exam. Um, and we recognise that through various uh, engagement activities with business schools that the exam did need to evolve. I think the last the last um, evolution was was back in the 90s, I think. So yes, the, it was it was high time for for some um, you know changes to be made and, and updates. So we part of the research program then was that we spoke to 65 uh, school professionals representing a wide mix of program types and sizes from schools all over the world. Um, and we spoke with over 5,400 candidates representing a really wide range demographic. Um, and we also put in place an advisory group to help us define what the new exam would look like. And the three key things that came out of this research then were um, to be to give the candidates to give yourselves a more efficient experience to give you more flexibility and, and to provide better insights to you and to schools so the goal then was to meet today's and future test takers with an experience that has evolved with the world at large i'll just switch the slide sorry so the, as I said, the three key things then um, are, are here on the screen. Um, and the, in terms of a more, giving you a more efficient experience, the exam is now nearly one hour shorter. So it's two hours, 15 minutes. Um, and it consists of three sections as opposed to the previous four. Um, and these sections are all equally weighted and, e and of equal length. Uh, which is 45 minutes per section. And we believe that the reduced content may translate into things like over, less overall prep time, reduced exam fatigue, and a better experience for you, the test taker. We also wanted to give you a more personalized exam experience with as much flexibility as possible. And one feature of this then is that you can now review and edit question, your, your review and edit your answers. Um, so it will give you more options to optimize your test taking strategy. Um, and we, you can now also decide in which order you take the three sections. And there's also more uh, flexibility and better control over how you send your score. And hopefully this will all contribute to reduced anxiety. Um, we also recognise that um, the need to ensure that schools and candidates are provided um, relevant and actionable insights. Um, and you will also, finally then, you'll receive an improved official score report, which will offer detailed performance insights to assess your strengths and your focus areas. And that is now included in the exam fee. So there's no additional cost for you um, on that one. Okay, so those are the overall the the the, the new features really and, and the benefits to you of the new exam. So we'll delve into now the nitty gritty of the exam, and then I'll spend a bit of time on this slide looking at each of the, the three sections in depth. So you may be familiar with the current exam. Um, so that has four sections: um, quantitative reasoning, verbal reasoning integrated reasoning and the analytical writing section um, and that had 80 questions um, and it was three hours and seven minutes so the new exam uh, as I said only has three sections and each one is 45 minutes long um, and it the, the exam tests verbal and quantitative reasoning and data insights skills so we believe that the by refining these sections, the skills tested now purely focus on 
critical thinking, uh, data literacy and problem solving, which all call for complex judgments. Um, and we know that graduate students need these skills to succeed in business school. And employers also worldwide need their professional staff to have these skills as well. So whilst the new exam doesn't have any new question types, um, what it does have is updated calibration to focus on these three key skill sets, which are problem solving, critical thinking and data literacy. So you'll have seen that we've removed the writing section. Uh, we listened to schools that they have other means to analyze your analytical writing ability um, and to enable us to uh, have the exam shorter and more focused and more efficient and relevant. Um, we decided to drop the, uh, the analytical writing section. So if we look at each section now in depth, so the quantitative reasoning section, as before, measures algebraic and arithmetic knowledge and how a test taker applies this knowledge to solve problems. So some of the problems are set uh, in, a real, in a real life situation, while others are presented in pure mathematical form. The second section then uh, is verbal reasoning, um, and this tests critical reasoning and reading critical reasoning, sorry, and reading comprehension skills. So the critical reasoning part tests your ability to analyze and evaluate complex scenarios and draw logical uh, conclusions and arguments and solutions. Whereas whilst the reading comprehension part tests the ability to recognize and understand ideas and draw conclusions from information presented um, in paragraphs. And then thirdly, then the new data insights section measures your data literacy skills. OK, so that measures the skills of recognizing, analyzing, synthesizing data and information shown in formats often used in real business situations. Um, so you will be asked to assess multiple sources and types of information, which will include graphic, numeric and verbal and, how, uh, and uh, figure out how the, each of these uh, sources link and relate to each other, and then come up with the conclusions to make an informed decision, much like you would have to do in the workplace. And schools then will use this section to assess your data fluency. Okay, so that's a run through of the three sections. Um, I realize there's probably quite a lot to, to take in there. Um, but yeah, hopefully you can understand how the, the three sections all complement each other. OK, so we'll now cover, uh, as I touched on at the beginning, how this new exam will give you an improved experience. OK, and then the four areas of improvements um, that I'd like to share with you are, first of all, the uh, question review and edit, which now includes bookmarking. Um, so it will give you more flexibility in the exam and allow you to complete each section of the exam using the strategy that works best for you. So bookmarking, for example, will allow you to note any questions you feel unsure about as you complete the exam. You can bookmark as many as you like. And then at the end of each section, the question review and edit allows you to review those questions within the remaining section time. And you can review any question, whether bookmarked or not, uh, and you can change up to three responses per section. So three, three responses per section. So that's uh, nine in total. Um, and the second uh, newer feature then is around um, how you select each section and, and how you decide um, in what order you complete these. So you've got complete flexibility there and um, you can complete the sections in any any order that you want. Um, previously, it, it wasn't it wasn't the case. So, yeah, you've got a lot of flexibility there. Um, and then for the um, your official score report, then so it now gives you detailed performance insights. Um, previously, uh, you would have had to pay extra for this score report, but it's now included in your registration fee. So there's no additional cost. 
um, and it will include detailed performance insights by section, by content type, um, how you've managed your time um, and, and a few more features. Um, and you will, within each score report, then it will contain information to help you assess your strengths and your weaknesses. So important if you feel like you want to take the exam a second time. And then the score sending. So we do hope that we have streamlined this process and we will make it easier for you to send your score to your the programs of your choice. OK, so you will as as the current exam, you will have um, included in your registration fee five free five, five score reports that you can send to programs. Um, but you no longer have to select these programs. Um, ahead of sitting the exam at the test centre. So for both things, for both test centre and online, you will be able to use your five free score reports um, up to, um, by selecting the schools, up to 48 hours once you've, see, once you've received your score report. So you've got a little bit more time um, to, to decide where you want to send your score to. Um, and um, just a note then on what the school actually sees when they receive your report. Um, so um, they will the, the report sent to schools will only contain the total score and section scores from a single exam. And so no other exam scores from previous exam um, attempts will be sent to the school. So you are in fully in control of what scores your school of choice receives. Okay, so some really nice changes there to help you, um, you know, al alleviate the whole test experience and make it better for you. Okay, so we'll move on. The, uh, this is quite a text heavy slide, I realize that, um, but I won't, I won't, I won't be going through it in, in loads of detail. Um, you can, um, you know, you'll have a copy of these slides so you can look at the table in more detail and um, it'll help you decide which exam to take if you're wavering um, between the two uh, for the duration that the um, both exams are available to you. Okay, uh, and I'll touch on the timelines um, by the end of the, the presentation. Um, but just to highlight a few additional points that I haven't covered yet. So um, just to reassure you, as before, the exam continues to be accepted by over 2,400 schools worldwide. And of those schools, it's 7,700 programs accept the exam. So really widespread um, acceptance there. Um, it will continue to be available through our test centre network and online. So again, no changes there. Um, and the experience will be largely the same, apart from obviously the location um, and also the availability with online being available seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Um, and with the test centre, you would have to identify um, you know, what slot um, is available that, that suits you. Um, so the questions remain um, adaptive. So individuals will experience a highly personalised exam experience that matches your ability level. So if you were to get a certain question wrong, the next question you would answer would be a slightly easier question. And um, if you were to get the question right, then you would be put on to a more difficult question and that in turn would score more. That's a very simplified way of um, explaining how our questions are adaptive. Um, what has what, what um, has changed actually is that there will now only be one minute, one one minute, one ten minute break. Okay, so you can decide when you take that if it's the after the first section or after the second section. There's only the one break now, um, and that that is also optional. You, you don't have to take that break. Um, the attempt limits will remain the same um, and will count across both versions. Okay, so you've got there um, that you can take five, you can take the exam five times over a twelve month period, and then eight times in a lifetime. But both exams count towards those limits. Um, and as before, accommodations will be available to test takers, um, and I'll I'll touch on that at the next slide. Um, and then um, pricing will remain the same. Um, as the current exam. Obviously, there'll be uh, country variations, but they there will be no price increase um, for the new 
improved exam. Okay. Oh, um, does that look a bit funny on your screen? I'm not sure what's happened there. Um, yeah, but I think maybe it, when it's been um, copied across, but not to worry, I will carry on. Um, the yeah, this this slide is just to talk about how the exam continues to um, focus on high quality standards, um, and it's of it's um, remained incredibly important during this process that we uphold our high standards on validity and reliability. Um, the exam remains part of a balanced admissions process uh, that should benefit both yourselves and schools. Um, and we feel that the exam is a good way to prepare for business school um, because it effectively predicts how successful you will be in business school classrooms. Um, and the scoring remains reliable um, and it, the scoring will enable schools to evaluate you against other candidates um, by um, being able to even the playing field and compare apples to apples. Um, and lastly, the exam gives you the opportunity to stand out in the applicant pool. Okay. Um, okay, so just um, a couple of words then on how the exam is fair and unbiased. Okay, so um, we continue to ensure that we avoid bias in our assessments. Um, the each question has always been subjected to a rigorous process to ensure fairness across different types of populations, be that gender, race, ethnicity, country, um, language, culture, you know, all the things that make up um, how we're all, how we're all um, you know, made up. Um, but we took this a step further. So to, to address concerns around the fairness of standardized testing, um, which um, schools and the public in general may make, um, we developed and applied a new psychometric methodology to ensure uh, the fairness of the test scores across these groups. Um, so every potential question is subjected to a rigorous seven step development and review process. So you don't need to know what all of these are. We just want to highlight, you know, that this process is in place. Um, and only questions that successfully pass these checks will be considered for use in the exam. And to give you an, an idea um, of the, the time frame, so on average, one question takes about 12 months to develop and go through this rigorous review process. So you can be rest assured that um, the exam and the questions are as fair as and unbiased as they possibly can be. Okay, so now we'll get into a bit of uh, a bit more detail around the new score scale. Um, so th this is an important uh, section. So hopefully you you're all still with me. So one of the key changes to the exam we've mentioned, I've talked to you about the the new features and how um, the exam and the features of that will give you a better candidate experience, but um, sort of the outcome of the exam is the score. Okay, so um, the one of the key changes to the exam is that the score scale is different, um, and there are a few reasons for this. So um, we wanted to um, support the updates made to the content areas and the design of the test. Um, the new score scale will provide differentiation between the current exam and the focus exam. Um, and we also wanted to normalize and recenter the test score distributions back to a more normal bell curve. Um, we've acknowledged and we've seen and we want to address the inflated score distribution that has been observed over the last 10 years due to the significant changes in the GMAT population across the world. So this aims to, to recalibrate that and um, yet yeah, to make it more, um, uh, what would you say, just yeah, support the, you know, support the, the, the updates that we've made to the exam. So we can go into a little bit more detail then on how the, the scores have actually changed. Um, so for those of you who are familiar with the current exam, this 
you know, it's probably a shift in your thinking, but if you're not too familiar with the, the, the current exam, then that's fine. That, that, that's probably better because <laughs> uh, then you'll have nothing to, to be comparing it to. Um, so the total score scale now ranges from 205 to 805 um, and that uh, is in increments of 10 um, and then each of the section scores um, ranges from 60 to 90 in increments of 1. Okay, and we wanted to ensure that the scales on the updated version were distinct um, as a result of the changes we described on the previous slide. Um, and the new scale allows candidates and schools to quickly distinguish between the two versions because it's likely that the, the two, two sets of scoring will be in the market for, uh, you know, for a couple of years with the, the scoring being valid for five years. Um, okay, so the, the, that's, the, that's the range of scoring that you can get. Um, and then if we go into now how you interpret those scores. So the key takeaway that I'd like you to, to make note of, of this score section is that percentile rankings should be the primary area of focus for, for test takers and for schools when looking to understand test results across the different ver versions of the GMAT. So, the, old, the, the current score and the new score cannot be compared like for like um, because they are two different um, two different question sets, two, two different um, constructs of, um, of the exam. So, so they can't be compared like for like. Um, but here is an illustrative example to demonstrate how you can assess competitiveness across versions. So um, you can see there's the, the chart here on the, the y-axis then, um, we've mapped percentiles um, and total score um, for the current exam in red and the focus edition in purple on the X axis. So in this example, um, there's been a candidate who scored 605 on GMAT focus, the purple line, um, and demonstrated their competitiveness to be at the 72nd percentile. And this is comparable to someone who scored 640. Um, so it's the same percentile, just different score, different numbers of, you know, different score. Um, the focus and the current scores then can be linked and compared by a score percentile concordance chart. Okay. Um, and that will then evaluate relative competitiveness among candidates taking different versions of the GMAT. Um, and I'll just go to the next slide so you can see a summary version of this. These tables and the complete tables so uh, that will show each increment, um, so e each possible score um, it, uh, in, in detail, they are available on both gmac.com and mba.com. And then there's a QR code there that will take you direct to that table. Um, so you can quickly see then why in this chart focusing on percentiles will be critical to to um, to evaluating your score and for schools to compare your score and evaluate your score against other applicants so for example a school might be looking for a candidate performance in the 90th percentile um, or higher um, so they will no longer be looking for a minimum score of 700 but rather something around the mid 600s okay so yes the key takeaway is around um the fact that percentile rankings um are the the best way to um understand your score okay so hopefully that section made sense and um as i said these the the graph the illustrated illustrative graph and these tables are all on our website so take your time to, to go through it um, in a bit more detail okay so um, I'll just move on now to less technical um, sections of the presentation um, so we have some information to share on when the official prep um, products will be available for you so they will all be available uh, two weeks from now on this on the 6th of June. Um, so we'll have several free prep resources available to you, including our study planner. Um, we have one that is designed at six weeks. 
Um, but that would be if someone was preparing for the exam as a full time job and not doing, you know, much else during that time. Uh, so maybe that is you. Maybe you can, you know, you don't mind putting all that time in a short space of time into it. But um, to break that into hours, it, around 240 hours is recommended for, you know, for a high score. Um, which is what you might be looking at. Um, but this, the planner can be broken up into parts and, and, and stretched out a bit. So it's just useful to give you, uh, you know, a, a rough schedule and it will um, outline the different prep activities that you'll take in different stages of your prep um, and enable you to track progress. Um, there will also be, like now, two official, two free official practice exams um, and a free um, official starter kit, which includes 70 real questions um, and a, a guided study for step-by-step -step prep review. Um, and these prep tools, as I said, they'll, they're on, on our website, which is mba.com. And then in addition to the free resources, you can also purchase the official guide um, which supports, you know, ha has updates related to focus um, and there are official practice questions and additional practice exams. OK, so a full suite of prep resources there for you to help you fully prepare. Um, and as I said, they'll be on sale from the 6th of June, so two weeks. Um, and I touched on accommodation. It's just to, to really reassure and reiterate that um, you know, the exam is as broadly accessible um, as possible and accommodations are available for test takers who meet certain criteria. OK, so certain accommodations like you would expect, um, you know, in, in, in many other exam formats. So extended testing time, additional break time and um, that sort of thing. Um, and if you need to if you want to know more about about applying for accommodations, then um, there's that QR code as well. Uh, so um just coming to yeah a few, couple more slides on timelines and then i'll touch on our scholarship which is quite exciting um so yes just some timelines then um where we are at the moment so well we're two weeks out from the when the prep uh, resources go on sale and will be the free ones will be available to download so that's the 6th of june um, and then at the end of the summer so on the 29th of august registration opens for the new exam um, and then testing will start in quarter four of this year um, and the current exam then will be available until early quarter one of next year so there will be a bit of a bit of crossover for the two exams um, and there's plenty of time if you are deciding to stick with the current exam there's plenty of time to continue with that um and and carry on you know with with your um with your preparations for that um, and over the coming months then we'll continue rolling out information we'll be holding monthly events with 700 plus club um like this one um, and then we'll also be holding gmac specific um virtual drop-in sessions um and information sessions that you can come along to and, and find out um, a little bit more detail on, on the various areas that we've covered today. Um, and also just to reassure you, we'll be, um, we are in the middle of um, running a robust educational program for schools as well and for test prep organizations like 700 plus club we'll be holding a summit um, over the next couple of months so everyone that you'll be um connected with will be fully prepared and will fully understand um the new exam okay so that's um that's all i've got to say so far anyway and i'm probably lots of questions as well to answer but um i just want to end um on the gmat scholarship that we have just opened for applications for 2023 so we're really excited um about um about this scholarship uh, we ran it for the first time last year um, and we're really pleased to be able to run it again this year um so the purpose of the scholarship is to support you with your business school application we know the you know applying to business school and the cost of actually attending business school is a really big investment for yourselves um, and we hope that through this scholarship um it will support you with your application and um, into your dream business school 
So we have 10 scholarships available to Europe, Europe based uh, applicants only. So this is something special to Europe, which is really nice. Um, and each award is worth up to four and a half thousand euros. Um, the full details can be seen uh, using this QR code and on our um, on our website. We will include a link to it as well um, in the email follow up. But um, in in summary, um, the prize includes a GMAT preparation course and we're really pleased that 700 plus club are one of our um course providers for this scholarship so really pleased to to have them on board um and the other yes the other prizes then include the uh, cost of the actual GMAT exam so whether that be the current one or GMAT focus um, an official prep package and then also a consultation with an admissions consultant um, to help you you know prepare your application and um, so the uh, scholarship is open to all but applications are strongly encouraged from from women from um different um, ethnic backgrounds the lbgtqi community um so yes we believe that you know having a diverse um uh, cohort of, of 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 students in business school really enriches the whole experience and then we believe that we're sort of highlighting these groups of people because they're currently underrepresented um, in the business school community. So in brief, really, we're asking a 600 word essay on what you believe your background and experience will bring to a diverse learning and business environment. So applications are now open. They're open until the end of July, I think. So uh, a little bit of time for you to prep, but um, yeah, do put that um, on your radar and we look forward to receiving an application from you, hopefully. Um, so that's yeah, that's all from me. Um, this is the, the the web link to look at more information on GMAT Focus. Um, and as I said, we'll be running um, you know other other drop in sessions, for example, information sessions um, from June until the end of the year, really. Um, so plenty of time to to get to know what the new exam is all about. Okay, thank you very much for your time, and hopefully. Um, yeah, everything was was clear enough in that. Thank you, Amy. That that, that was super wonderful. I think you covered a lot many details. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot there, yeah. uh, uh, but we'll be sharing the slides nonetheless. So I'm I'm sure that you know everybody who's in the presentation, uh, they they will have more time to go through yeah. it. But but really amazing changes coming <laughs> coming with the GMAT focus. I'm I'm for one very excited about Great. it. I think I think it's 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 fantastic. Yeah. It's it's really 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 welcome change. Yeah. Good, good. Absolutely. Good. Um yeah, I think uh well, we have some questions mm -hmm. coming in. Uh, I think uh we'll, we'll just take it towards the end. I I just wanted to share a couple of things with everyone here, right? So I will I will not take too much of your time, but I think uh knowing that the new GMAT is coming, uh you know, as a test prep we get a lot of questions from from the candidates who are just starting the desperate journey and they're kind of, you know, worried, hey, what should we do? Should we wait? Uh, should we start, right? What is the right way to go about it? And we know that the round one deadlines for, for you know, the business schools, MIM or MBA, they started like early September, sometimes, you know, in, in October. And with the timelines for the focus edition, that it will start in October. So I, I just wanted to give some insights on that and what we believe is the right way. I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, so I'll just take you know a couple of minutes to 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 give you some insights on that, and then we will come back uh, and open for the Q and A. But please uh, keep keep your questions, you know, keep posting the questions. So we'll start taking them. So so what are the top tips to crack the GMAT? Now I uh, I mean initially when we started doing this, the idea was to give you in general the tips for for how to prep for the GMAT. But I wanted to add that this is also applicable to the focus edition, right? As Amy was saying that the whole aim of GMAT is to test you on your critical reasoning, problem solving and, and data literacy skills, right? So, uh, and also before th those aspects were there, but they had something else as well. But now it's, it's very much focused on these aspects. So first big question now, which GMAT should you be prepping for the current one or the focus one? Now, I'm going to I'm going to look at a couple of things here and just to give you an idea of how you decided. First one is 
what is changing, right? So as, as Amy said in one of the slides, if you look at the content, purely from the content wise, right? That there is nothing new that's coming in in the GMAT focus, right? So uh, for, for all, the, all the math people out there, if you, if you draw a subset, like, so GMAT focus is, will be a subset of the, the current GMAT, right? So everything that is in the current GMAT will be in the focus edition, right? So there is a restructuring of the content and some of the content goes away, right? Now, what it means is if you're preparing, so for, for the students who have started their GMAT prep and then they wanna to pivot to focus, the good news is what you are studying now will suddenly already help you in the focus one, right? You don't have to completely change your prep. There is a, there is a lot of overlap, I think. I mean, there's 100% overlap in content. There's nothing new in the focus, right? So don't worry about in terms of content, right? So if you're studying for GMAT, continue that. You're already preparing for the GMAT focus on one side. Big thing, uh, current GMAT integrated reasoning is outside the score, right? So when we talk of 720, 750, 770, we don't consider integrated reasoning inside, right? It's outside. It's only quant and verbal, right? So let's keep it that. In the GMAT focus, uh, if you guys paid attention, there are, there are two big things coming up for the quant and verbal. So in the quant section, geometry is going away. It's only be focused on arithmetic and algebra. In the verbal section, uh, sentence correction is going away, right? The grammar is going away, critical reasoning and reading comprehension. So you have to, you have to ask yourself, are you, so current GMAT, you don't need the IR, but you need the geometry and the sentence correction. Focus, you don't have geometry and sentence correction, but do you, you do have the integrated reasoning as part of the score. In terms of, are you good at integrated reasoning versus the other, that's, that's what changes, right? So if you're really not good at integrated reasoning and there's no way that you can improve it, maybe it's, it's, it's a good idea to get done with the current GMAT and have a score and be okay with that, right? That's one part of the content. The third thing is, now what changes is your strategy. Right, look, mastering the content, mastering the applications is, is one part of the test. A big part is also how to take the test, like the, the key strategies of pacing, uh, you know, time allot allocation, how you manage your resources, which questions not to attempt. A lot of that goes into any, any, any standardized test. And I mean, GMAT, of course, demands that from you, right? So the strategy does change when you go from current version to the GMAT focus, right? Because you have all the three sections that, that are included in the final score. The score has changed, right? The number of questions that you see, like 21 uh, questions in quant versus 31 now, 23 in verbal versus 36 now, right? So it has become shorter in terms of the number of questions, but it also demands that you do some changes, which order, which section, and I mean, those are the key things that change. So if you combine all these three things together, right? There's no new content. It's integrated reasoning versus the other two. All you need to worry about or work on is your key strategy and how you in, incorporate the structure changes inside your test taking strategy. My key tip would be, if you are starting your prep, start with the current GMAT, right? So prepare for the content, do everything that you need to do for the current GMAT. As Amy said, the new prep material will come out in June. So you will start seeing what are the different question sets and then pivot to the, the, the GMAT focus in a couple of months. So we are in May, right? June, July, August, keep focus on the current GMAT. So you will be doing all of it. By default, you are preparing for the focus edition, right? And then depending on the simulations that you take, the scoring that you see, you can either go continue with the current GMAT and be done with it or pivot to take the GMAT focus in October. But remember, it can only be in October, right? So round one, round one candidates, we, we have no choice. We have to stick to the current GMAT, right? So look at the timeline, see what you want to aim for, and then you can always pivot to focus, right? It can be a decision that you can make in a couple of months. You don't have to worry about it too much now. And with the, the books, the material, the question sets coming in on the 6th of June, it will also give you a lot of insights into what type of questions are coming. You can prep, practice and see what are the key areas, you know, that you need to work a bit more on. 
right? So don't panic too much. Go ahead with the prep. Be comfortable in knowing that you can change your strategy and pivot to focus if need be. And you will, you will not have to change too much in, in terms of what you have already done in these months, right? So I just wanted to share this with you because a lot of, a lot of students have been calling us, asking these questions and kind of panicking, hey, the round one deadlines are around the corner, round two, what should we do? So I thought I will, I will just share this with you. Uh, so yeah, this is it and nothing changes in terms of how you approach a test, right? GMAT is still a demanding test. It has not become easier. I don't see it becoming easier. On the contrary, the focus is more on your critical reasoning, the logical reasoning, problem solving skill sets. So, uh, which means that you need to really hone that more than before, right? So we still have the same strategy, three steps. And I, I, I would you know, suggest you guys to follow the same phase. Foundations are the key. You know, knowing the key concepts is, is needed. Please don't, don't fall for tricks, tips, you know, shortcuts before you have mastered the concept, right? You know how to approach a critical reasoning question. You know arithmetic, you know number properties. Once you are comfortable in that, then focus on mastering the concept. That's phase two. Step two is when you practice, your aim is to master the application, right? Once you have done this, everything else is built on top of these two layers, you know, uh, being faster. What is a shortcut that I can use here? You know, uh, what, picking numbers and answering the questions, they are built upon these two layers, right? So there's no shortcut. And the, the, the better you are in step one and step two, the less time you will take in overall prep, right? A lot of times students skip the important and the needed part and go directly to the hard questions. It's very typical we have seen, uh, hey, I can solve 750 level questions from the OG, you know, the hard ones. So I'm, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not the case. And the last is when you master the strategy, right? Which is by taking simulations, understanding what is missing, your time management, are you finishing the test and all those small, small details that you can then kind of recalibrate and come to a final test day strategy. Right. So strong foundation, make sure you have it. GMAT will always be a test of reasoning, not test of content. They don't, they assume, you know, your math and you know, your verbal things. You, you can analyze a topic, but it's, it's how you apply your knowledge to the question at hand is what is being tested. Remember that please. There will always be three steps that we always tell our students. So make sure that you understand what is given to you in the question what they're asking and exactly is in bold. That's where the whole game is. I know GMAT questions, they hide information because it's a part of the test to understand how the candidates will drill down and you know critically analyze the, the, the statement that is given and get to the conclusion. The last step solving is usually the easiest one, right? Yes, it demands a bit of calculations and stuff, but that's the easier compared to the first two steps. So always, always test yourself that you are that you are following these three steps and keep it simple. Last is, and I cannot emphasize enough, guys, please keep an error log. If you cannot measure it, you cannot improve it. Keep an error log, log in your errors, the mistakes that you make, and then every now and then, like every 10 days, 11 days, do revisit the error log, right? Sometimes we get students say, I have this error log, but I, I haven't seen it you know, in two months. It's not gonna happen. You need to come back to your you know, problem areas and, and learn from them. These are my four big tips that I, will, I, will, I wanna leave you guys with, right? And I think we just have five, six more minutes. So uh, tomorrow we're having a free session, free GMAT session. It's gonna be on the reading. Uh, you, you guys can, can join it. So uh, one of our top verbal tutors will be taking you through how to you know, master the reading comprehension part of GMAT pick any question from reading comprehension and what are the key steps that you need to take to, to nail it would be great. If you join in, it's tomorrow from seven to eight. Uh, then please join our discord community. Uh, we share a lot of information like this webinar, the slides, the information we get from GMAT about the new test, our understanding of the test, any tips, uh, admission news, talking to the schools, top tips. So everything happens on our discord community. There are around three, 350 members there, right? We engage a lot there. So join in, you know, it's, it's uh, be a part of the community, contribute to it, learn from it. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you will, you will learn a lot there. So 
join that. And yeah, if you guys want, you can try our GMAT platform for free. You will have five days full access, uh, including a simulation. So it has a lot of videos, a lot of practice questions, and the best part is you can create your own tests. So I request you guys to come take a look at the platform and also use it as an idea to take your first simulation and see your baseline score, right? Uh, and yeah, that's it. So we can open for the questions now. Right? Yeah. Uh, we have we have five minutes, so we are pretty much in time. Yeah. And we can also go five times beyond if there are questions. So we have one from Sylvia. Are you covering quant on verbal on the free session? So uh, hi, Sylvia. Tomorrow it's going to be verbal, reading comprehension. But uh, we, we have it usually every month. So, you know, we change. It's quant, verbal, integrated reasoning, a mix of things. Uh, tomorrow it's going to be reading comprehension. Cool. And um, Franny is asking, is the new GMAT exam considered easier? So, Anshul, you, you did touch on that. Um, and just from our perspective as well, um, you know, we're not, it, I suppose the, the perception of hard and easy is very much in the, the whole, you know, in the candidate itself. It's quite an individual um, measurement, I suppose. Um, but with the, the fact that the exam is question adaptive, um, it means, and I, I think I mentioned this in the presentation, so uh, you will answer a question and then if you get that one correct, you will you will go on to a more difficult question. But if you get that one wrong, you will go on to a, a, an easier question. So, and that would be scored less and the more difficult question would be scored higher. So it can kind of move around, you know, you can get a question wrong, right, wrong, right, for example. So, it, it you know, it, it's adaptive. Um, and I see your point, you know, I see your question. So you've you know, because it's shorter, is it easier? But we really think that this not this new exam is, is just purely focused on the skills required in business school and in the workplace. So looking at problem solving, critical reasoning, you know, and that sort of thing. Um, and hopefully with the fact that it's shorter and you can review your questions, um, you know, it might alleviate some stress. So in that sense, you might feel like it's easier, it's less stressful. So yeah, there's a few, few elements to it. Hopefully that's, that answers your question, Franny. True, true. I, I mean, I, I just wanted to add that it might feel, as you said, Amy, yeah, with, with the with the more candidate friendly, the you know shorter time uh, for the test, it might feel that hey, it's it's easier. But I think it's the structural changes. It's not easy in terms of content, right? Uh, I have been following GMATs for years. I don't think it's going to be easier. On the contrary, I think it's it's going to be a bit more challenging. If you look at the percentiles mm -hmm. and everything, for all the quant people in the audience, they would understand. Uh, so when you recalibrate the the bell curve, you know the top line. That's why you see, you know, that the higher scores, you you really have to be a bit more competitive. But again, it goes to the basic skill set. So they have restructured. It's gonna be streamlined. Right, you don't have too many areas to cover. So it's more focus, less content. That's good. But I don't think it's gonna be easier. It's more manageable. Let's yeah. say easier. I won't use the word. Not yeah. yet. I think we have to wait till yeah. October, November, just to have a feeling of yeah, it. It's, yeah. So yeah. yeah. But I mean, yeah, the yeah, you know, hopefully the the new the new features that that we have, you know, will help. You know, will give you a better experience overall, um, and you know, make make things um, just you know, yeah, better better for you. <laughs> yeah. um, oh yes, I'm I'm super happy finally that we have this ESR as part of yeah. the GMAT. Like it's it's such an amazing yeah, thing. So thank you guys for doing that. Like it was, it was needed. Like it's 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 amazing that that that's available. I think it's it's gonna be really really helpful for all the yeah. candidates, right? To 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 have more data on okay, how did I perform? What can I take? And how what do I do before yeah. I take the exactly, other one? Exactly. Yes. Right. I, I'm I'm super excited about the changes. Uh, do we have any other questions? Maybe you can answer this so one. Um, it's from Linda um, Anshul, and it's um, asking how many months in advance should I prepare for the GMAT and yeah, I take your point, Linda. You've said that most of your friends have prepared longer than six weeks, and I, yeah, I, I would, you know, agree with that. That unless you're yeah. literally doing it all your waking hours, then which is probably impossible, then you could probably do it in six weeks. But it's going to be longer. <laughs> and absolutely not. No, uh, thanks, Linda, for for asking asking a question. A lot of a lot of students or, or candidates, you know, don't take into account that. You know the, the the prep is 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 very personal in GMAT. Yes, you can look at your friends or or people on the internet and 
not everybody is too honest about how much time it takes, but uh, I can tell you the data that we have. As a test prep, we, we look at the average times that, that our students are taking. So what the data tells us is, on average, students are spending roughly between 220 to 250 hours of prep, right? And this is spread over a period of three to three and a half months. That's what we see on average, right? Yes, there are students who take less time, right? We have had students who have prepped for like 100, 120 hours and still got into their, their target score. We also had students who went beyond three and a half, you know, six, seven months of prep, just because some of the areas that they needed to really nail down, right, it took some longer. So I think uh, when you're planning, I would definitely go ahead and understand the average, which is, I would start with 250 hours, see how much time you have per week, and then go from there. Like if you have 10 hours per week that you can commit to GMAT, and you know it's gonna take you 20, 250 hours, more or less you should look at 25 weeks, hands down. Then once you start the prep, right, you will, it might be that you, you take less time, and that's, that's always a welcome thing. But if you're planning, I would I would go ahead with the average. Uh, another thing is uh, do take the the initial you know the the the, the baseline test. We have the simulations available on MBA.com. That does help you with understanding how much time should it take you to get to the target score, right? Uh, as a rule of thumb, very plain equation is if you are 200 points away, right? 200 points away from the target score is around 250 hours. Right. That, that's what you can expect. That's what the data tells us. Right. I hope this answers your question, Linda. Okay, any other questions? Quick, I, I don't think we have any more questions for now. Uh, yeah, there was one, but I just answered it in the chat around okay. when the current one will be available until, so that's early next year. Oh, yeah. Okay. Great. Well, Look, it's it's exactly yeah. eight, <laughs> seven in UK. We're we're pretty fine in yeah. time. Great. Well, yeah. so that's that. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Uh, if you have any questions, anything, uh, please let us know. I mean, you have our contacts. Uh, you can always send us an email, message, reach us on Instagram, wherever, uh, and we'll get back to you. The easiest is always on Discord. Uh, and we'll be sharing the presentation with you, right? So you will have them, uh, I think, in the next uh, couple of days, you will, you will receive it. So, yeah, thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Amy, again, for all the all the Yeah, information. thanks for inviting us to, right. to speak tonight. And, yeah, it's been great to, to talk to you all. Hopefully, yeah, you've got some good information there. And good luck with your prep and your exam. Exactly. Oh, thank you, Linda. Appreciate that you found it useful. All right, everyone. Well, thank you again for joining and good luck with, with everything and hope to see you tomorrow in the free session. Bye. Bye, Bye. everyone. Have a nice evening. Bye.